to the second presentation. So people would like to invest into artificial intelligence, and I tell them no, uh, invest in human intelligence, and that's what we will have here. We have Dr. Abhur Abdul Majid. She is uh, going to present very interesting this subject, which is the uh, generic imatinib versus glivic first Saudi pharmacovigilance study. So what happened in King Faisal Specialist Hospital in Jeddah, uh, the patency of uh, imatinib or glivic finished, so they moved from brand to generic and pharmacy. They took this step and they informed all physicians to monitor these patients uh, during the switch from the brand to generic. And Dr. Abuhur, she will present the pharmacovigilance, and that's uh, something very useful, very important, if we will move from brand to uh, generic or in the future also biosimilar. Dr. Bahur. Thank you, Dr. Bassam, for this introduction, and I think you just made my introduction easier. Uh, thank you for the organizing committee for this opportunity. Um, my topic today is uh, generic imatinib versus Glivec in chronic myeloid leukemia patients, uh, a pharmacovigilance study. I have nothing to disclose or conflict of interest by any way. Uh, by the end of this talk, hopefully we will be able to understand the differences between the generic and brand drugs, um, the importance of pharmacovigilance and how it impacts the patient's uh, safety and overall and uh, reviewing some of the evidence on generic imatinib, uh, and finally, share our gen uh, experience in King Faisal uh, Jeddah using ima generic imatinib with CML patients. So, what are really generics, and why do we need pharmacovigilance systems? Uh, can you hear me? Or, uh, cause I, okay, so let's start with a story. As Dr. Basim said, now when a drug comes first to the market in the United States, uh, the company got the right to sell this medication exclusively uh, under a brand name for a certain period of time. And then when that exclusiveness runs out or the patency runs out, another companies are um, going to uh, manufacture a generic drug. Usually a generic drug is cheaper than the brand drug. And does, that, that doesn't mean that the new generic drug is actually inferior or not as good as the brand drug. Why is that? Well, because before starting and getting the approval to manufacture this new generic, the company have to submit an abbreviated new drug application, ANDA to the FDA. This application should provide data saying that this generic drug contain the same active ingredient, is pharmaceutically equivalent in terms of strength, dosage form, administration to the original product, and bioequivalent um, to the original products. Most importantly, to guarantee and provide data showing that both compounds, compounds have the same identity, strength, purity, and quality. Now, having two molecules with the same active ingredients, uh, with all these requirements, does it mean that the medication will be exactly the same? Because there's something else called the excipients or the inactive ingredient which could be in the medication. The FDA did not specify that it have to be identical to the uh, brand product. However, it have to be safe and does not affect how the drug work. Um, so what happened after FDA guarantee approval. They start with something called post-marketing surveillance. This is a vital issue, not only in generic, in fact, in all medications. So there are several ways to do the, uh, the post-marketing surveillance. Manufacturer must report any problems uh, or serious adverse effects uh, to the FDA. The FDA itself will periodically inspect manufacturing plans and continue to monitor the drug purity. And most importantly, looking at the, um, mon uh, the FDA adverse events reporting system and uh, re reviewing the, web, uh, the MedWatch reports. All these steps could be uh, categorized and come under a bigger system, which is called 
the pharmacovigilance. Pharmacovigilance, as per WHO, it is the science and the activities related to the um, detection, assessment, understanding, and preventing the adverse effects or uh, any other drug-related problems. It may include product quality, adverse drug reactions, and medication errors. Now, if you look carefully, pharmacovigilance, um, it's a designed system that could go and vary to different level. It could be national, international, uh, wise, such as the WHO, faculty, such as on the hospital level, or even as public health. Now, I would like to share this with you. This is a very um, interesting uh, framework for pharmacovigilance. I would like you to take a closer look at the boxes on your left. You will notice that pharmacovigilance is the responsibility of everyone in this community, starting from doctors, pharmacists, nurses, healthcare providers, even consumers themselves. The idea of pharmacovigilance is to report any suspected adverse effect or um, quality issues regarding the medication or even um, um, actual adverse events. And then the data will be collected, analyzed, and uh, um, after that, there will be a decision-making uh, and taking action to prevent the risk. It could go from fixing the label, changing the schedule of a medication, and it could reach to drug recall itself. All that to improve the uh, patient care and prevent medication-related problem and hopefully reduce on mortality and morbidity. Now, how is all this connected to CML patient? Many years ago when CML was first discovered, it's considered an incurable and invadable fatal disease as we all know in here. However, when tyrosine kinase inhibitors were introduced, overall survival came up to 90%, especially when uh, imatinib was discovered back in 2001. So what happened now is, now that the patency is running out for um, uh, Gleevec, as Dr. Bassem said, many other companies started to produce these generic imatinib in the market. Uh, in 2013, Health Canada and European Medicine Agency have approved several uh, products. And just three years ago, uh, it was approved by the uh, FDA uh, to use imatinib uh, in CML patients. Um, this means that all these products have proven to be bioequivalent and um, uh, having the same serum level of imatinib after oral ingestion and uh, the area under the curve. However, there were some uh, case reports that demonstrated a reduced in efficacy of generic imatinib, uh, especially the one used outside North America and European Union. Uh, the clinical significance of these reports may be limited because it uh, probably was a small size of patients, single author for uh, several of these reports, and most importantly, the bioequivalence of uh, generic imatinib that used in these reports uh, were not established and clear as the rest. So in this slide, there are, these are the case reports that were presented or um, uh, reported back then when the generics start to come out. The biggest, largest uh, case series was the last one with 126 patients. They de demonstrate loss of hematological response in 33 patients. There were no specific details on these uh, cases. Now, even though these abstracts and results have raised the concern of the efficacy, one has to wonder if this represents the worldwide experience of Gleevec. So, Looking into another study published in 2017, um, this study looked at the efficacy of generic as a frontline patients who were just diagnosed, newly diagnosed with CML uh, in the first group, and in the second line, as a, in the second group, um, uh, who were on chronic phase. Uh, it's a three-year follow-up exp uh, follow experience. Um, you will see that in the first group, the overall survivor at 36 months was around uh, 58%. As in group number two, it was 
Uh, the uh, patients uh, who used frontline generic imatinib achieved complete cytogenetic response at 24 months were 81% versus 93%. And those who achieved MMR at 24 months were 48 compared to 93%. Now, there were a few patients who were switched to another lines of therapy, uh, usually because failure of, ther uh, failure of treatment or could not tolerate the side effects. In conclusion, uh, they found that generic imatinib as a second line does not have a deleterious effect on patients. However, in first line, it might be suboptimal uh, in the management. What about another study? Back in 2018, there is a multicenter observational study in Italy uh, conducted, uh, looked at CML patients in chronic phase who were in major or deep molecular response at the time of switching. 61% um, uh, had the same molecular response uh, during a 7.5 month period of follow-up. 25.5% uh, improved, 13% worsened. And when I say worsened, it's important to flag that they never lost their major molecular response, but they just fluctuate, fluctuated in the level of uh, MMR. 17% uh, of the patient reported new or worsened side effect. None of them were grade three or four, and none of them left, uh, only 5% of them, had to uh, switch the imatinib due to side effects. In conclusion, in the study, the switching to generic imatinib was uh, effective and safe in those population. And just a few weeks ago, um, an abstract was posted in uh, um, the ASH. Uh, they looked at uh, CML patients in chronic phase who were stable disease for at least 18 months. Um, uh, they measured the PCR values at 12 months before switching, and they took two to three uh, values in the 12 month following the switching to generic imatinib. The results were uh, median PCR value after switching was reduced by 0.69 uh, in favor of generic imatinib. The pre and post adverse event um, were statistically significant different in favor of generic imatinib except for the muscle cramps and conjunctival hyperemia. And they conclude that generic imatinib does not have a deleterious effect on CML control and presents uh, an acceptable safety profile similar or even better than brand imatinib. However, these data require further um, uh, studies to support it before we just um, uh, implement. So what did we do in King Faisal, um, uh, Jeddah? What happened is we start to prescribe generic imatinib for our patients back in November 2017. So um, giving these uh, conflicting uh, conclusions about generic imatinib, we decided to assess the efficacy and the side effect of generic imatinib. Um, it's a single center retrospective observational study. Uh, one year follow up. Um, our primary objective were uh, the occurrence of uh, any warning signs uh, or failing uh, as per uh, the European leukemia guidelines. Secondary objective were assessing the adverse effects of this uh, uh, medication. We included all CML patients who are in chronic phase and were switched to Gleevec during the study period um, and with a minimum of at least three months on Gleevex. Uh, we excluded pa pediatrics and patients who are newly diagnosed with CML and started to receive Gleevec. Uh, sorry, um, the generic imatinib. So these were our parameters. Uh, we looked at the diagnosis, molecular genetics, uh, time of switch, and we tried to look at the um, signs of side effects, CBCs, differential, if the patients actually came to the hospital and admitted. We also interviewed the patient personally uh, through phone call um, to assess their side effects and adherence and compliance, so to rule out adherence problems if there was loss in the uh, um, molecular response. Demographics, median age for male were um, 48 years, female 54 years old. Median duration of brand imatinib was 48 months before switching. 
Uh, generic imatinib no dose was 400 milligram daily. We had around 52% of our population female and 47% male. Uh, only 15% had renal impairment at the time of switching. And these were our results. We had 19 patients. Uh, 13 out of the 19 patients, which is 68%, were undetectable, uh, had undetectable BCR level at the time of switch. Out of those 13, eight of them remained undetectable uh, even after one year follow-up on Gleevec, uh, on uh, generic imatinib. And those who had fluctuating uh, in the MMR, you can see that it had a stable molecular response within the one year uh, after switch. What about the adverse effects? Four out of 19 patients had uh, not documented adverse effect and we could not reach to them. Uh, eight out of 19 uh, were experiencing new, worsening uh, new or worsening adverse events. None of them, again, grade three or four. The most common was nausea and vomiting. Some of them had to use antiemetics uh, later on. Okay, in conclusion, looking at our one year preliminary uh, results in this uh, study, we found that CML patients who achieve MMR or more while on brand imatinib therapy uh, retain their molecular um, uh, response uh, during the 12 month observation of generic imatinib. Uh, which, uh, and these results are kind of parallel with what's been publishing lately uh, in the literature. Tolerability, although the number is kind of high, but none of our patients had to stop using the medication or uh, deviate from the treatment. So that's something maybe it need to be further assessed on the long term. Um, and finally, for further direction, uh, assessing the long-term effect on generic imatinib, we would like to follow up the patient up to 24 months uh, and continue to assess their adverse effect profile. Uh, and we would like to conduct the same study on patients who are recently diagnosed and started on uh, generic imatinib. There are a few limitations in our study. The fact it's a retrospective, small size, and single center. And finally, I would like to thank everyone who contributed and the authors of this project, and thank you all for your time and listening. Thank you, Dr. Bahar. Can you return this one slide back?